Hi Matty. Hi Amanda. So what's it like being vegan in Paris? Oh, in Paris, in Paris. Well, I live just next to a market where they sell plenty of fruits and vegetables, so there's no problem for me at home anyway for my cooking, no mm -hmm. problem at all. And I have a small shop that sells organic food as well. Uh, so if I want to buy some tofu or hummus that's organic and uh, no animal food at all in their products, they have a ve vegan uh, part in their shop as well, a small part, I must oh. say, but they have. And it tends to be the, the rule now, even in uh, organic shops. It yeah. is, it makes things easier. We've asked for it, actually. We've written to them and asked to make things easier for vegans, so as we don't have to read always the, all the labels. Mm. So, vegetables, fruits, I like raw food, but I'm too greedy to be contented with the raw <laughs> food. I like beans and lentils and, uh, and bread, of course. Um, Vegan, the problem, the problem is it's more social, it's with the family, I should say, because uh, the family can't understand, really. Uh, they, they think you are going to miss something, you know, and you, they think you are like a hippie or something <laughs> like that. And um, they don't, I wouldn't say they don't respect you, but... Uh, Last time I went to a barbecue in my family, you know, I said, no, I don't eat animal food because there's too much animal suffering. And my brother-in-law, three times, he passed in front of me with the sausages and said, Maite would like a sausage. Mm. So you see, it doesn't go into their, their brain. <laughs> Just I can't go into it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a strange. And um, sometimes they are a bit condescendent, you know. Loves animals, <laughs> or uh, well, they think you're gonna miss iron or proteins or whatever. So you talk to them, you talk to them, but they they still go back to the fridge and take their slice of ham, and there's nothing to do. Maybe because they are they are too old now. Mm. <laughs> Maybe if I talk to their children or grandchildren, those would understand me, but I, I dare not do it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I would have problems with my family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure they, the children would be more receptive. Because mm. uh, children nowadays are quite receptive to animal suffering and ecology, you know, climate change. They, they, View, they see uh, documentaries on the TV, you know, and uh, it's it's been talked about everywhere now. Anyway, so even I'm sure at school they talk about it. Anyway, uh, what else? Vegan? Yes, there are vegan restaurants in Paris. No problems for that. The problem is just take friends who eat meat, take them to these restaurants. <laughs> but it's only once in a while they can accept it. And uh, when in the, you invite them, you know, you show them that they, you can have a full meal, delicious meal, with plenty of colors, something really full of life, and they enjoy it. Mm. But when comes time for cheese, where is the cheese? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I can't say I have, I have lost my friends, but I don't see them like I used to. Mm and my family as well. I keep in contact with the telephone. You said that you've lost friends? Um, Not really. I, I just don't see that them like I used to. Yeah. I'm invited in many places and I, I don't want... One of them, he goes fishing, he kills fish. fish. I don't like it. Do and you find uh, it challenging to like have conversations about your it's feelings. boring at the end to have conversation always about yeah. the same subject of, uh, of food, you know. Mm. It's, it happens with my sister almost every meal. <laughs> you know, we talk about it and I'm, I'm bored at the end. Mm. I mean, I, how can I prove better? You know, I'm healthy, I look much younger than I am, I dance, I can, 
I can cycle, I can swim, and can walk for 20 kilometers in a day. Uh, how can I prove better that, you know, by my presence, that it's a good diet anyway? Mm. So there is no, no, I don't miss anything. So you said you're, you do dancing, so what yes, type of dancing yes. do you do? So rock and roll, cha-cha, tango, uh, waltz, uh, 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 what, zouk, zouk uh, merengue, uh, bolero, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there's no problem with the dancers because I only dance with them. Mm. After, sometimes we go for a drink. Peanuts or, <laughs> or French fried <laughs> once in a while, and uh, but uh, and I one day one of them, you know, said, "Oh, how much energy you have today? So you must have had a good steak for the day." So <laughs> I said, "No, no, only vegetables." Yeah. <laughs> So you do a lot of outreach work, so you give out? Oh yes, 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 especially in the winter, in the summer, not so much, it's very hot too. <laughs> uh, once, once to three times a week we go on the streets, we leaflet, yes. We have a small stall for information, we sell badges, uh, we give a lot of information to people. People come to us, you know, we, we usually stay in front of the metro mm. station for instance where there are quite a lot of people. We also uh, go to uh, conferences and films, you know, and uh, we have a small store as well. Yeah. Uh, like a film, we had a, a film at the Rex, a big cinema in Paris mm. this winter with Mathieu Ricard, with a Buddhist and uh, Buddhist animals. Strongly. And uh, we had a store there, there were maybe 3,000 people and wow. we flitted, yes, yes. We had a big conference too at the Science City of Science in Paris yeah. with uh, 1,000 people, yes. And we had a cocktail party and uh, we flitted. And we had three, uh, well, three of our heroes, we had Peter Singer. Yeah. We had um, uh, Mathieu Ricard yeah. and Emeric um, Caron. Mm. Who, yes, and they were they gave a conference. So how did you yes. get them over here? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's L214, uh, my mm. organization that's getting stronger and stronger. Mm. Yes, yes. Just, he was Peter Singer was very happy. To it's very, very interesting. And we had uh, questions and answers afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, very, very interesting. And uh, of course, uh, we have echoes after in the press and the newspapers as well. Did you get newspaper coverage from the conference? Not too much, a little bit, yes. Mm. No, no. It's difficult to have newspapers coverage, yes. We get some sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we had an article in a, a Liberation, which is a good newspaper, in a, which has a lot of uh, subscribers, uh, last week. Mm. Another organization, which is called FUDA, yeah. two pages, two full pages wow. about veganism. Yes. Uh, we had in uh, Paris Match, another magazine, Paris Match. We have one of the journalists is vegan. Oh so, wow! So we are very lucky because she has she she writes many articles about animal mm. welfare and, and veganism. Yeah, very much is like uh, the sun or one you know quite a lot. Of people. Yeah. 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 And uh, yes, so we go in the streets. We go. Um, and Christmas, uh, no, not Christmas Eve, but uh, New Year's Eve last year, we went in the street to talk to people and they fled, and it was quite an experience. People were very receptive and uh, they were so happy. And, uh, <laughs> we talked and laughed. And oh, that's really nice. good. <laughs> yes, yes. 
what else? Which are the opportunity? Uh, we we have conferences, mm -hmm. with, uh, yeah, in universities as well, yeah. Do you get invited to the universities or do you ask to go? Well, and we organise. Mm. We invite people from Montreal. We have uh, signatures, books, signatures as well. Uh, like Martin Gibert, who is from Canada, who just wrote a book about the Denison. Um, yes, films once, uh, once a month, sometimes once a week, we have a film. Uh, some somebody in the city hall of uh, of Paris in the second, uh, he's uh, in our favor, and he uh, he offers you know free of charge one of his uh, wow uh, <laughs> what, how you call it halls yeah you know, for proje film projections like we had cowspiracy yeah yes. Uh, Ghosts in, in, uh, Ghost in our machine. Yes, uh, well, whatever, uh, many films like that. Mm. And it's an opportunity to talk to people and to be flat again. Yes. Yeah. That is so cool. So, <laughs> You've got a lot of um, influence. Yeah. Yes, yeah, we're very, very active. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So, what do you think about protests? Oh, oh that's, that's good too, yes. We have one against slaughterhouses. Yeah, we have uh, one for the rights of the animals. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, veggie pride. We have the one against fur. We have one against vivisection. Mm. And uh, every time it's about between one and two thousand people wow. in the street and we leave that. We, we have now a vegan place near the protest mm. so that uh, maybe many passerby can come and get some information as well uh, and uh, of course people find it funny when you say close the through to houses they say that it's impossible and uh, some people ask us but where are we going to kill them oh. <laughs> or some people say but um, they're there's going to be unemployment, mm. you know? so we have to answer to these questions, of course. But uh, I think it strikes the imagination of people to see all the uh, all the posters, the big posters, you know, uh, with pictures of animals. Sometimes they they are not happy because uh, they hide the eyes of the children. Mm. They say you shouldn't show that to children. Do you think children should see the reality of where their meat comes from? Well, I think children really look at look at the posters. They are very impressed. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We were in front of the uh, agricultural fair in Paris. It's a it's a worldwide you know fair. It's very well known. Well, it's France in France, but it's French, but uh, it's well known in the world. And uh, the we are every day in front of the gates. Yes, with the po posters with the leaflets. How did the people? Yes. How did and the farmers react? <laughs> oh, right. <Gosh. laughs> <It is. laughs> yeah. Yes, but we we are always uh, strictly uh, lawful. I mean, uh, we have the we have uh, police officers with us. Mm ready to protect us if we are insulted or anything. That's good. And we, there's always a declaration at the, with the police, you know. So, uh, sometimes we go, for instance, in front of a department, a small supermarket called Super U, to tell people to buy only free ranch eggs and organic if possible. Mm with posters, with leaflets, and with two policemen <laughs> looking after us. So they, usually the manager of the supermarket is okay, you know, no problem. We would like a free rent, uh, you know, cage, battery cage eggs to be suppressed in France. Yeah. Yes. But it's not. It's, it's really, and in industrial products, it's the rule, it's usually battery cage wow. eggs. Yes, yes. Mm. So, yeah. so, 
So it's it's a way to open the conscience of people, and it's a way also to start talking about veganism. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> So some people will say, oh, you are a welfareist because uh, you're talking about animal welfare. Mm. Yes, but it, it's another approach, you know. And, uh, you, you have to take every possible approach. Do you think there's one defined way to help people become vegan? There are many, many ways, I think. Many ways. And, uh, Certainly not by uh, like looking like you feel superior to them, you know. Because never forget that before you were vegan, you were not vegan. Mm. <laughs> you were eating meat like they do, and you didn't know about these things. And uh, information, information, films, contacts, books have changed your life. So how long have you been vegan? I've been vegan for two years. Well, progressively, because I was vegetarian at the beginning, and then I started outre outreaching in the, in the street, you know, leaflettings, and uh, that's when I met vegan people, and uh, of course I was quickly convinced that uh, milk, you know, was represented a lot of suffering as well. Mm. That's when I stopped uh, milk pro dairy products. And I started, I uh, became vegan with my, at the same time as my son, actually. And, uh, he was a volunteer with me at the same time as well. Oh, that's so yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> so we have no problem eating together. Yeah, that's lovely. <laughs> and, his, and his friends as well. Uh, well, at the big, yes, at the beginning, uh, maybe it's not easy, especially people don't, around you don't understand. You know. But after you explain it to them, uh, they accept it. Mm. So what was like the main reason you became vegan? The main reason? Well, it's well, animal suffering, of course, yes. The books I've read about it, mm. you know. And the, the way the industrial uh, breeding is atrocious. And the, the way they are slaughtered and, and all that. I was never very much for meat, but I used to, you know, when I had friends for dinner, I used to buy French chicken, prepare it with love. Cooking is a labor of love. Mm. <laughs> but uh, now no more. Yeah. Uh, there's no... I, I've discovered so many new flavors and new products and new vegetables and fruits that there's no... I, I, I don't feel deprived of any, really. And I, I don't feel, I don't feel tired, I don't feel heavy after a meal. And now I can face uh, the cow without <laughs> bad conscience. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Do you have any tips for people that want to go vegan? Well, I think they should read some books, really. They understand. I think the best way to understand the implications of eating meat. And they also should take, be aware of the ecological problem, the climate change coming, you know, and the, the, the effect of breeding, industrial breeding on the planet. That's great. <laughs> Thank you, Mate. You're welcome.